Good evening, Dr. TV. Thank you very much, Jorge. Good to good to see your smiling face again, and good to hear some f- really well spoken French coming up. Félicitations, but the français est toujours uh, mieux. So keep it up, keep it up, and uh, uh, one thing in Quebec is an appreciation of anybody who tries to speak French, as, as long as you're trying uh this is very very much welcomed over here merci beaucoup <laughs> merci à vous merci à vous so um today um we're going to be looking at uh cogniva um one of our very favorite um products and a lot of science behind it so um, I guess if you'd like, I could start to share the screen. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So let's get right into it. Um, again, thank you for inviting me uh, to the program tonight. Um, this will be interesting. So we're born with this remarkable thing in our head, the human brain. Uh, most likely the most sophisticated piece of machinery in the physical universe. Uh, Immediately, and even before birth, uh, we are accessing our external environment, uh, processing information, and look at this little guy, uh, only a couple of months old, and he's already developing firm opinions. Uh, Here, uh, he's upset because he asked for applesauce and he got creamed broccoli. Uh, Here's the same kid 90 years later, and he's still saying, I wanted applesauce and you gave me creamed broccoli. So same sentence 90 years later. But clearly uh, there have been major changes taking place in this brain uh, over uh, the decades. So many things that can change this healthy but fragile infant brain into a worn out machine. Uh, let's look at some of the potential injuries that can um, take place to this brain. Um, pollution in the air, in the water supply, in the food that we eat. Uh, Head injuries, even minor bumps to the head can result in long-term consequences. Uh, Poor food choices that are loaded with neurotoxic substances. Poor sleep can affect the brain. Uh, Multitasking and stimulatory overload, uh, drugs, uh, alcohol, and of course, don't forget about stress and all the other things that uh, come out with our 21st century lifestyle. All of these can clearly be destructive uh, to the brain. But the number one factor that all of us suffer from, and I hope you continue to suffer from it for a long time, is the aging process. Uh, Aging itself uh, will always carry some degree of brain deterioration, uh, some individuals more than others. Now, a neurologist or a neurosurgeon or any neuroscientist can look at a brain at autopsy and pretty easily determine its age. Uh, Just look at this picture of a young versus an old brain. But we can all determine the age of someone's brain without cutting open somebody's head. We don't need to be a neurosurgeon. Now, here's a picture. You've all seen this before. The car in front of you has its turn signal on for 15 minutes or 15 miles. And yeah, you've probably seen this guy. Yeah, not wanting to be accused of ageism. There are features of turning older that we recognize. And now we have access to new technologies whereby we can actually look into this guy's head without killing him. Uh, There are scanners that can take pictures of a living, 
active brain. And uh, here we see different brains and you see the younger brain uh, on the left is thicker and just as important, the areas of high activity show up in red. The more red, the more brain activity. And so that's a newer brain on the left and an older brain on the right. The issue here is that most of us are somewhere in the middle. And the whole point of the exercise is to keep as far to the left as possible. Uh, but we're challenged. Uh, here's Arnold, relaxed on the left and stressed on the right. Now, remember, we could look into Arnold's head now. And this is what we see. Stress certainly activates parts of the brain. And if these signals are too strong, or persist too long, they can damage neurons, brain cells. Here's another scenario. You've all seen this too, I imagine. Driving on the cell phone, reading a newspaper, uh, drinking coffee, multiple distractions. And believe it or not, studies have been done looking at these people's brains. Look at this. Uh, between distracted driving, uh, major differences easily appreciated on these scans. So it begs the question, what can we do about this? Well, let's start with some uh, simple things that you probably already know. Uh, exercise is probably the best thing to preserve brain function. Uh, eating well, of course, avoiding bad habits, uh, paying attention to your medical health. Um, these are all going to be important to your brain health as well. So all of that is obvious, but is there something proactive rather than just regular maintenance that you can do? Is there something like a brain pill? Well, yes. And this is where the field of neurotropics begins. Uh, this started getting more and more attention as baby boomers started worrying about their cognition. And what is a nootropic? Uh, well, quite simply, any substance that you take to improve brain function, whether it's memory, attention, focus, creativity, and so on. As some of you may have heard terms like brain food or smart drugs. And these can come... Uh, in the form of pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, these can come in as natural products, and even specific vitamins and minerals can be considered neurotropics. Uh, one of the first drugs uh, developed is called uh, Adderall. Um, this was intended for kids with attention deficit disorder, but apparently now the largest market for Adderall is the gray market where university students are accessing this drug for studying. Now, I wouldn't recommend it, but this is a popular thing to do. They use this pharmacological drug for attention deficit, using it to study. Uh, ginkgo is something that's literally been around for thousands of years, uh, also well known for preserving brain function. But um, these historic herbs fall far behind the efficacy of newer discoveries. And of course, we have to mention glutathione here. Uh, raising uh, glutathione is one of the hottest topics in maintaining and even improving cognitive function. In my opinion, glutathione is the best neurotropic that there is. But there are others. Uh, one of the most researched natural substances that serves as a neurotropic is phosphodiosterine, uh, abbreviated as PS. Now, just look at the list of areas that PS has been investigated for. Memory, learning, uh, attention, concentration, uh, mood, and more and more. Phosphatidyl serine. Let's look at some other substances that are receiving attention. Um, vitamins B12 and folate are getting new recognition, but not just regular 
B12 and folate. In this case, they need to be in a special form to be properly utilized by the brain neurons, what we call a methylated form, methylcobalamin, methylfolate. So how does all this work? Uh, let's look at the smallest functional unit in the brain, a nerve cell called a neuron. Here's a micro photograph of a neuron. Just looks like a tangled mess. So let's look at a diagram, which will make uh, it a little bit clearer. Uh, a neuron has a number of parts to it. Uh, the main body of the neuron, where the actual computer is stored, uh, this is where all the information is stored. Then there's a long wire that comes out of the computer. Think of this like the telephone wires you see running by the side of the road. This is where the signal travels down. And this uh, wire, this axon, can actually be several feet long. Uh, then these wires uh, end in terminals uh, that broadcast these signals. Think of these terminals like little radio towers. Finally, the signals from these broadcasts go out to other neurons. And the way a neuron picks up these signals are with fine antenna, what we call dendrites. Those are the little bush-like structures surrounding the body of the cell. So it's all about sending and receiving signals, broadcasting and reception. So what are these signals? Are they radio? Are they Wi-Fi? <laughs> no, they are through electrochemicals called neurotransmitters. And their neurotransmitters pass through a small gap in between the neurons called a synapse, another new word. Hey, so now all of you are experts in neurotransmission. Now here's the thing. Unlike a computer that has thousands of connections, the brain has billions of neurons and trillions of synapses, trillions of these connections. And it's through these microscopic connections called synapses where all the communication takes place. So if we look at a single synaptic connection here, uh, let's make another computer analogy. What would happen if even a single connection in your computer wasn't working well? Um, now, you have an idea of how pen potentially fragile your brain is because you have trillions of these connections. And it will clearly have effects on your cognition. What is cognition? Cognition is our ability to take in and remember vast amounts of information. Uh, cognition is our ability to ponder our existence and the meaning of life. Uh, cognition is, able, is to be able to juggle running a meeting and thinking about what to feed the kids supper at the same time. Uh, cognition is the ability to plan, to strategize, uh, to look in the future. Um, so... All of these are reflections of cognition. And so have you ever felt like this? Absent-minded, forget more than you used to, lose focus during a meeting, uh, bombarded by demands and just shut down, forget the right words to use when you are distracted, uh, knowing the answer, but it remains on the tip of your tongue. Well, now... You can do something, and uh, that's where nootropics can help. Uh, nootropics for long-term memory, like phosphatidylserine. Nootropics for short-term memory and concentration, like green tea. Nootropics like glutathione uh, for the health of the neurons itself. Uh, nootropics like methyl 
B12 to improve the transmission of electrochemical signals down those long axons. Uh, other neurotropics like chromium and vanadium that are involved in energy management of the brain cells or, or blood flow uh, to the neurons. Uh, neurotropics that influence the transmission and function of neurotransmitters across the synapse, like choline, methylfolate, methyl B12, and others. Well, we studied all of that, and with that knowledge in hand, we've presented something that I'm really proud of, um, Cogniva. Uh, so the name Cogniva is derived from the word cognition. Now, this word is not part of many people's everyday language. Um, uh, let's look at something just a little clearer to remember what to answer. What does Cogniva do? Uh, here are four important points. Uh, we all want to be alert and pay attention and actually remember what's going on around us, whether it's a lecture, a conversation, or reading a book. And uh, sometimes we just don't feel up to the task. For me, this often happens mid-afternoon, you know, it's like two o'clock and suddenly you want to nap instead of finishing a project. And you want to be able to continue to do all these things into the future. So to summer, summarize um, alertness, concentration, uh, memory support, uh, uh, energy to focus and protecting your brain to last a long, long time. And really, I can't think of anyone who wouldn't want to take advantage of those benefits. Uh, I know even college students are trying to access things to help them study and learn. Uh, everything from a Starbucks coffee to some dangerous prescription drugs. Uh, here we can offer something that's actually good for them. And adults, and I include you and me there, who are trying to get a million things done in a day, or better still, um, all at once. Well, we could use some help. And let's not forget all those baby boomers and beyond who are out there looking <laughs> for their keys that they lost. Uh, trust me, <laughs> I see this happen. And remember the explanation of neurons and synapses and how maintaining these connections is critical. Uh, we call these neural networks, another computer term. So these connections count and are on the billions of neurons and the trillions of synapses, uh, healthy connections will ensure your best cognitive performance. And that's a root of another one of our unique blends. Uh, this word synapse, well, we have developed and branded something called synapse 50, synaps 50. Uh, the PS stands for phosphatidylserine. And if any of you want to know more about the other different ingredients here, you should be able to access uh, this information um, in your back office. And if anybody wants to know if there are studies on Cogniva, I mean, after all, you've heard me say many times, research, research, research. Well, yes, if something does not have clinical proof, then we can never be sure that it works. In the case of Cogniva, here is just one clinical trial done on uh, the major ingredient phosphatidylserine. Uh, it's received major attention in brain research, and I always like to refer to human studies, uh, easy to find online. So we're looking at after 12 weeks of use, um, recognition, memory recall, executive functions, uh, mental flexibility, uh, all of them uh, improved. And um, you could check out all of the other important components we've added to Cogniva. And then that's, that's your homework if you're looking uh, to learn more. Uh, we spoke about the PS. Uh, chromium increases brain glucose transport and provides neural energy. Uh, vanadium is 
an essential micronutrient for normal neurochemical metabolism. Uh, choline is a critical component of brain cell membranes and neurotransmitters. And boron is a trace element involved in neuronal energy utilization. So all of these are in the Cogniva. So Cogniva is there for all of you to take advantage of. Uh, give yourself both short-term benefits and long-term benefits, and we hope you get even sharper than you already are. So there we go. Amazing. Amazing, as always, Dr. Jimmy. Amazing. Um, I want to open the mic or I want to open the chat to drop, to, to let you drop the questions that you may have. And um, well, I will start as always, as always, I, I have like this, every time I hear you, every time I get amazed about all the things that we have, the, the amazing benefits of our products. So I will drop my first question. Uh, doses. Is it good to take more than two or three or four because at some level I, and it probably happened to me and probably many of you have the same problem you get this <clears throat> i don't know like this uh concentration that you wanna and then you become addicted to this because you are taking one and then the other one and then the other one and the and the flavor is good so is that a enough like a amount of Shoes that we should be avoiding taking? Um, the, the only issue that you'll run into, um, and that's from the green tea component, is that it may make you hyper alert uh, to the point where you can become anxious or nervous or not sleep that well at night because the, the green tea uh, supplies you with natural green tea caffeine. So the only real danger is overdosing on caffeine. But you, you, you can, <laughs> as someone like you, um, Arge, who also drinks coffee, I mean, you could take four, you can take six. It's, it's not going to bother you. But there are people that are sensitive to it. So they may feel uh, some adverse effects if they're taking too many. Ah, good to know. And my second question, and I will start doing this. Every single parent in this world wants to have the brightest kids in the world. <laughs> so you know where my question goes. Like everybody wants to have the best kids, like best students, best, best in everything. Is it allowed to let kids take Cogniva? Um, I think there are two answers to that. Uh, one of them is legal and one of them is medical. So I think it depends on the country um, whether we have the right to market this uh, to the pediatric population. So I think that that's a, a legal constraint. Medically speaking, um, I, I, I think that if a kid is old enough to tolerate caffeine, and it's a cultural thing. There are some cultures where kids will be given a cup of coffee. Um, then certainly they could take this. And uh, it, 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 they will feel the effect and they will um, maintain their brain health. And if they continue taking it, maintain their brain health for a long, long time. So really, I think I, I cannot answer the medical question. I, 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 the legal question, I think you would need to, to check country by country. Okay, good. Then I'm, I will jump to Laurie Che's question. Does has Cogniva actually? No, sorry, that's uh, Laurie Chase is asking about if it Cogniva can help anyone who has dementia, and then I will add a Alzheimer as well. Yes, absolutely. And one of those uh, uh, studies that uh, that I showed, and and there are many, specifically look at phosphatidylserine and dementia, especially Alzheimer's, especially mild cognitive impairment. Um, this, this is absolutely critical. critical. Um, I, I would for sure recommend this uh, to somebody who has these issues, for sure. Good question. 
Then I have another question. If Cogniva actually had human clinicals or just the individual ingredients? No, the, it's the individual ingredients. Um, we are so consumed with our research efforts uh, just doing studies on immunocal and glutathione. Um, I mean, we're, we're not a pharmaceutical company with billions of dollars uh, at our fingertips, uh, and nor do we have a huge buildings full of, of, of researchers. Um, so most of our money, almost all of our money in research is put towards um, immunocal. So we depend on other people's research on the individual components. In this case, there's some absolutely beautiful studies done on phosphatidylserine. Nice. I have a question now from Holly, which is, what is the amount of PS the brain needs daily? What percentage of that amount does Cogniva provide? I believe the dose uh, in, in Cogniva is a hundred milligrams. Um, you can find products with with more than a hundred milligrams, um, but again, we try to keep the the dose low so so that uh, it can be tolerated um, by by everybody. But I believe it's a hundred milligrams of phosphatidylserine, which, by the way, appears naturally in your brain. Okay, perfect. So nice. <clears throat> Uh, was that those per day? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is a question or this is a quote. When taking multiple bricks, I heard the number four. Was that those per day or all at once? I don't know. Um, so I guess that may be a translation that if we're talking about the, remember this, this is a chew, so it comes in cubes, which I guess could be translated to a brick in, in, in certain uh, languages. Okay. Um, uh, you can take them all at once, but you certainly will feel a rush. Um, if you have the patience, you can take them multiple times during the day. Like for example, I might take one in the middle of the morning when I'm feeling a little bit uh, sleepy or in the middle of the afternoon when I'm feeling a little bit lazy. Um, so uh, you could take them all at once, but um, you may enjoy taking it several times a day. I know, uh, Orge, like you, I, 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 I love the taste. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, just for the records, um... The taste is good for for many people. Uh, just uh, this is a this is a story. This is not a testimony. One kid ate half of package. One package. Just imagine eight year or seven year old <laughs> running, 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 running. <laughs> yeah, just I noticed good. a comment by uh, uh, Reynald uh, Plamondon. Uh, they mentioned that uh, he's seen uh, um, tremendous uh, results. Uh, after a stroke or a cardiovascular accident see af af after a stroke um many of the times the neurons are injured rather than dead and if they're still alive uh there's uh, room for recovery and um this is where we try to be as aggressive we can with maintaining a good nutrition for these neurons um, so, uh, in answer to Reynald's uh, question, yes, uh, definitely the, the, the components in the Cogniva are, are going to potentially help in this regard. So I'm not surprised that you're, you're seeing these results. So thank you for mentioning that, Reynald. Super. Well, thank you, Dr. Jimmy Gandal, for another lecture of our amazing products. Uh, really, I enjoyed, like, I enjoy every one that you give. I want to thank you also, Lucien Labarre, for, for the translation in, uh, from English to French. Thank you, merci beaucoup, uh, Lucien, always. And I invite you to take a look into the recordings. Uh, you can always take a look into the recordings in English. But the recordings comes with the translations. If you, want to, if you want to take a look into the French one, you just go down into a recording and choose the language. 
So thank you very much. I hope everyone enjoy as I enjoy this. I, please get, uh, come with me and help me to give a big round of applause to Dr. Jimmy Gutman and Merci beaucoup, everyone who has been over here enjoying this amazing. Thank you, movie. Orge. And I think I, I would like I would like to mention as well that in a week from tonight, uh, we're going to be doing uh, another webinar, Glutathione Central. Uh, where um, this is uh, the first time I'm going to be giving this lecture. It's on glutathione and aging. So that uh, should be very, very interesting. Oh, my God. That, that's that one we cannot miss. And we need to call everyone we know. Yes. Because just for your records, once when I was doing my virtual uh, interviews from from Guatemala and I was interviewing people from from Canada, who has been taking the product for more than 20 years, I thought that I was interviewing someone younger, and these persons were taking product for more than 20 years. So aging, actually, my mom is taking that because she believes <laughs> that she's, like she's getting younger. So please uh, ask everyone to join next week, same time, Thursday, the second Thursday of every month, Luther Thion Central with Dr. Jimmy Gunman talking about aging. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. an amazing month, September. This is going to be a powerful month. Take advantage of our Cogniva, Derma, and also we uh, everything that we have on the table for you. Thank you, Dr. Jimmy. Thank you.